What does your crazy neighbor do to be labeled the crazy neighbor? So my neighbor is something else. I'll share my experiences and I'll let everyone be the judge if they fit the crazy neighbor theme. He would sneak into my yard at night and roll up my sod. It would be laid perfectly the night before, but I'd get up in the morning and it would be rolled up just like it was when it came from the store. I finally got pissed and spent the night laying by my back door with a baseball bat and a flashlight ready to bonk the crap out of whoever it was. Sure enough, they came around 2 in the morning and I stood up, turned the light on, and was face to face with four raccoons rolling up my sod looking for bugs. He wouldn't let anyone use his driveway because he didn't want it to get dirty. Anyone, including himself. He parked on the street outside. If he thought you were having a party, he would drag a bunch of plastic bags full of God knows what to the end of his driveway so no one could turn around it. One time I came home and he was outside hosing it down in the rain. To his credit, I have never seen a cleaner driveway. He eats my flowers. In his defense, he told us that he has been doing it for years when he introduced himself after we bought the house. He also brought over frozen cookies in a plastic bag as a housewarming gift, but wasn't sure what was in them. He's a guy who keeps to himself and eats my flowers, comes over to my yard and eats like the lilies raw or brings scissors and clips the heads to boil and make jam. I thought that his particular foraging was interesting and quirky, so I planted a couple of raspberry, blackberry, and blueberry bushes three years ago. When we first moved in, I told him to help himself to berries any time, especially before the birds did. The bushes have all gone insane, and the entire side of my house is now a summer berry haven for us to share. Alright, let me guess. His name, his name has got to be Billy, right? Because I'm pretty sure he's part goat? Story 2 This reminded me of this crazy woman in my old neighborhood who used to pretend she was a cop all the time. First encountered her screaming at the post office staff because she'd arrived past the pickup time and they couldn't guarantee her letter would be in tomorrow. She was there almost an hour just pitching a fit while they opened the other counters around her. Do you know who I am? And, you know, all that stuff. Second time I encountered her, she cornered some poor child on the bus and was telling her she'd have her arrested because she was a police officer and she didn't like the way the kid was eating a bag of crisp or whatever. Real invective stuff. I stepped in and politely asked if the child knew this whack job, at which point she backed off. Anyway, I guess she saw me leave at my stop because I woke up the next morning to find my garden torn up. Total weirdo. She also pulled us over, pretending to be a police officer, saying that we had somehow broken the law whilst pulling out of our driveway and that she was going to call it in. I considered using my dash cam video to actually call it in, but we had just moved in and I wasn't sure if she was the type of crazy to burn the house down or poison my dog. After chatting with the other neighbors, it turns out she's just the wannabe HOA president in a neighborhood with no HOA. So, mostly harmless, just very annoying. Story 3 Well, I used to have a neighbor who was legitimately mentally ill, although I don't know his actual diagnosis. His truck wouldn't start one day, dead battery, and he told everyone on the street that another neighbor was stealing the electricity. He knew this because of the way this guy parked his vehicle. Obviously, it was sucking electricity from the ground for his battery, which drained the car batteries near him. Many times, he would run down the street and warn everyone to hide their valuables because Japan was invading the country. He wasn't on substances, but he did take medication for his mental illness, and everyone on our street could tell when he stopped taking it. Whenever he would start saying completely irrational things, we would remind him to take his medication and he would thank us and go home, presumably, to take it. He lived alone and he was getting older, so I think he had a hard time remembering to take it. There were many, many more incidents. There was also this time he was hopping my fence during the day when I was gone at work to use my backyard pool. When confronted, thanks to a snitch neighbor, he claimed he had an agreement with the previous tenant that he could use the pool whenever he wanted. Guess what? I'm not that tenant. I have a bunch of security cameras now. Story 4 My friends used to live in a gentrifying neighborhood near the beach in my city. They had a regular apartment, but someone bought the building in front of them, beach adjacent, knocked it down, and put up a few luxury homes. This crazy woman bought one. She had a two-car garage and a driveway, and best we could tell, she had one car. But no one was allowed to park on the street in front of her house which was clearly marked as a public street and where people had been parking since forever to go to the beach or because their building didn't have parking. We could see this street from their apartment. She went out and keyed any cars parked there. It took a while to figure out it was her, but eventually people saw her doing it. All the neighbors warned their friends not to park there and people started putting up cameras to get evidence of it. 
Some dude with a piece of crap truck started parking directly in front of her house every day just to mess around with her because he didn't care if she scratched it up. So she slashed his tires. It got to the point where every time she opened her door to walk outside, the neighbors would cuss her out through their windows. One night, she went out in the middle of the night and painted the entire curb on that street red. Someone got it on video and several neighbors called the city. I think she was getting a talking to and a fine and she had several insurance claims pending against her from damage to cars and she finally stopped. Everyone still hates her though, even new neighbors who are told the story of her from older residents. I guess the joke's on the dude who parked his beat-up truck right in front of her. Then again, who would have known she'd go that far and slash his tires? But then again, who actually knows what crazy crazies will actually do? Story 5. We've had an arrangement with our neighbor for 20 years now that she can use our paddock to put her horses on. Well, she's getting up there in age, so there's been some long periods of time where she hasn't had horses in our paddock in recent times. We notice some new horses there and assume, well, that they're hers. Except they're not, and they belong to this crazy lady in town who, through town gossip, finds out the paddock doesn't belong to our neighbor, but belongs to us. So she goes around spreading a rumor that my mom tried to poison her horses, which is the first time any of us realizes the horses aren't our neighbors. My mom then proceeds to inform said crazy lady that A, no, she didn't try to poison crazy lady's horses, B, there's nothing poisonous in our field, C, if she keeps spreading rumors, mom's going to the cops, and D, if she ever puts her horses on our land ever again, mom's selling them or calling the SPCA for abandonment. Crazy lady then proceeds to become even more crazy and starts lurking outside our place taking photos of us and our paddock, then gets caught going up random people's driveways through our small rural town taking photos of people's kids. She's since been spoken to about this behavior by the cops and it seems to have stopped, but damn, she's a weirdo. The stupid thing about this is our neighbor is the one who has the crazy lady nickname throughout town purely because she prefers animals to people and comes across as a little impatient when dealing with people, but we've always gotten on well with her. She just isn't a people person. Story 6. My neighbor was an 85-year-old widow that lived alone. She had two vehicles, a car, and a truck, and over the course of a few months, I realized that she was no longer parking her car in her garage like she had for the many years prior to that. Then suddenly, the truck wasn't being parked inside the garage either. Turns out she no longer had room in her garage to park her vehicles because she was walking to a residential construction site about a block away every evening and she'd grab two 2x4s and bring them home. She had over 500 boards stacked in her garage and when she was questioned on what she was doing with it, she didn't have an answer. Bonus crazy neighbor stories. I drove 16 hours straight, pulled in my drive, and crashed on my couch immediately. Must have left the garage door open because I woke up to the neighbor lady shaking me to see if they missed my newspaper delivery that morning also. Neighbor lady thought I didn't clean up after my dog in her front yard. I had never owned a dog, so she retaliated by walking around the neighborhood with a garbage bag, picking up every bit of dog poo she could find, and dumped said bag of dog poo on my front lawn while I was standing in the front window watching. Ran up over $300 on one month's water bill of mine because a neighbor lady was hooking her sprinkler up to my water when I'd leave for work in the morning and would let it run all day until right before I got home from work. She would put up an ugly orange snow fence behind our yards in the fall to keep my leaves out of her yard. Me pointing out that I only had pine trees did not dissuade her from the decision to leave the snow fence up. Day one, I should have known something was fishy with this lady, like literally day one. I closed on my house at 9am and had a roofing company at the house waiting for the call that I closed. We spent the day ripping off the old layers and getting bundles up on the roof for the next day. It was hot out, we were exhausted and all sitting in the front yard cooling off when neighbor lady walked out of her house down the sidewalk to my house and without even acknowledging the six of us staring at her, she walked in the front door and had herself a look-see. She hated dandelions. I found this out the first year that I lived there when I noticed that my lawn was dying off in an extremely weird way, almost as if someone was spraying weed killer on the stream setting trying to snipe dandelions from 20 feet away. That's literally what she was doing. Being the nice guy I am, I would clean her driveway off in the winter because I had a snowblower. She would never thank me in person, but instead she'd come over to my house after I had finished and would leave a bag on my front door that usually contained whatever expired goods she had in her pantry. 
Some of the standouts for me were like a dozen cans of 10-year expired Chef Boyardee stuff and once half a bag of wheat flour. Why'd she have to steal water when the price of wood she has is enough to make her a millionaire at times like this? She probably knew that the prices of lumber would skyrocket. Granny playing the long game here. Just like me playing the long game on YouTube, how about considering hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel? It would really help me out in the long run. Looking forward to years with every single one of you with all these crazy stories. Let's go ahead and get on to the next one. Story 7. Oh, Jeanette, may she rest in peace. We rented a house from my mom's co-worker. Our landlord grew up in this house and was renting it out. Across the street was Jeanette, an 80-ish year old lady who had lived in that house most of her life and knew our landlord very well. Well, because she knew the landlord, that meant she felt she could come into our house whenever she wanted. She watched us through her window and had every excuse to come by. I have never really locked my doors, but obviously we started to. It still didn't stop her. If she knew we were home, she would ring the doorbell incessantly. Our blinds always had to be down, the living room lights off, so she wouldn't know we were home. Just got in? Quick, run inside before Jeanette sees you. We saw her peering out of her blinds on a regular basis. One morning, the doorbell was going. I hid in the bathroom to pretend like I wasn't home. How did she see me? The doorbell stopped, but the doorknob kept rattling. She tried for a full five minutes to open our door. Probably would have been longer, but I gave up and let her in. Why didn't I tell her to just leave? Look, I'm a nice Midwestern girl. I can be confrontational if someone is being mean, but she was just lonely? A tad crazy maybe, but harmless. Some notable things that she did and said. My husband was cooking when she came in and called him a good little housewife. Told our neighbor he shouldn't be dating his daughter. They were, of course, not father-daughter and were in fact a 40-year-old couple and there was not actually a big age difference. My favorite was when she was in our living room. She very suddenly crouched down and peered out of our blinds and said, Look at those fat people walking that skinny dog. After we started locking the door, our doorknob rattled like she was trying to break in and the doorbell was a consistent thing. My husband tells this story so well, it's like she was a character from a sitcom. We didn't know these people existed. She was eventually put into a home and passed away about a year or so later. Story 8. This guy is weird as hell. Okay, so he plays VR in a very large bunny onesie, like the kind the kid gets in a Christmas story, which, you know, is cool, I guess you do, but he plays with his window open so everyone can see him, and on top of that, he plays, from what I can tell, exclusively military sims and never breaks character. You can hear him yelling stuff like, Contact, 30 clicks south by southwest, or stuff like, Down reloading, ready up. The guy will throw himself to the ground, and I mean throw himself. The few times I've spoken to him or seen him in person, he's had bruises on his arms and face from hitting the ground. And that's only what I can see from his window. Other than that, at night you can hear the guy grinding, hammering, and drilling on something. I don't know, he's a weird dude. He says he works for the government and does contractor work. He has really nice stuff, expensive stuff, and new vehicles all the time. He can't carry on a conversation, starts getting nervous, and will break away as soon as he can. He was home for a few weeks and said he was in between contracts and I managed to talk to him a bit while he was setting stuff outside. That stuff he was laying out, a rucksack that had seen some heavy use and everything from medical and survivalist camping gear to empty magazine holders and a plate holder for bullet-resistant plates. He said he was letting them air out since he was planning on going on a backpacking trip for a few weeks. Weirdest part is he leaves almost every night between 9 and 10 p.m., probably to get some of the junk food he'll leave in his car occasionally, but every night? I like to think the guy is a secret agent and uses the VR crap as an excuse to explain away bruises and cuts. Either way, I feel sort of safe. He's genuinely nice when he does talk to you, just in that I haven't spoken to another human being for years kind of way. You go, secret agent bunny, saving the world one hop at a time. Pretty cool, Bunny Man is definitely living a double life. Definitely, right? Story 9. My parents' next-door neighbor, Nancy, started with the no trespassing sign in the backyard that faces our yard and nothing else, set up a motion-activated floodlight that faces the side of our house and nothing else. She stabbed her ball when it landed in her yard when we were children, called the cops on the neighbors because their dog barked constantly despite them not owning a dog. 
thinks my mother, the sweetest person you can meet in this world, is a backstabbing traitor for warning the new neighbors not to let their kids play on Nancy's lawn. Verbally assaulted me for chasing deer out of our flower garden, etc., but the true psycho moment came with the trees. We have large trees along the property line, just barely on our side, and she was starting to go all psycho about the tree is going to fall and crush her house and demanded it be cut down. We consulted an arborist who said it did not, but could use a trim that would make it impossible to fall on her yard at all. The entire time they were trimming, she stalked the property line and screamed if anyone stepped over it. While this trim was happening, a single stick fell on her lawn. She lost it, threatened to call the cops, told them they better have all their licenses up to date, etc. Arborists tried to blow at her off, but my mom insisted they check. Sent someone to City Hall and renewed their license. 30 minutes after that, a cop showed up to check as Nancy had called them. Arborists were super thankful for my mom for warning them. Story 10. Explodes. Okay, I guess that requires some explanation. This isn't so much crazy as it is dumb, but it sure seemed crazy to me. This happened back in 2009. I had a neighbor back in the day who we will call Gary. Gary was a really sweet guy, middle-aged kind of guy, kind of had it rough in life but managed to keep his spirits up. He liked beer and barbecue to a degree that made me like him immensely. He made extra money by doing odd jobs around the neighborhood. Heck, he mowed my grass for pretty cheap. Great guy. He lived with his uncle, a cool old coot with a hook for a hand. The uncle supplemented his income by buying and selling random stuff, much of which he kept in his backyard. Very Sanford and son. They even had the old timey truck. Gary loved to make barbecue. He would slow smoke stuff in smokehouses that he made himself out of random junk. People would bring him things and he would turn them into smokehouses. He made the neighborhood smell nice. One day, I'm off from work, hanging out at my house and playing video games. Suddenly, there was a loud explosion that sounded like an artillery shell. Pictures fall off of my walls and my cats scatter and hide. And being a dumb, my idiotic self goes running out the back door of my house towards the sound of the explosion. My neighbor's house is right behind mine, across an alley, so I immediately see the following. The awning on the back of my neighbor's house is on fire. There is a 50-gallon drum in the backyard. It is on fire. There is a tarp held up by a number of poles to provide shade in the backyard. It is on fire. My neighbor is on the ground, unconscious, being rolled around by his uncle and a buddy. He is also on fire. So I see someone is already calling 911, so I go to help, and by the time I get there, Gary is no longer on fire, so one of his buddies grabs the hose and I grab a bucket. They have one of those dual spigot thingies so I can fill the bucket while the other guy uses the hose. I am putting out the awning on the house, and the other guy sprays down Gary to make sure he is good and extinguished and to take heat from his burns, which look terrible. As I am refilling the bucket, I see the guy with the hose is putting out the tarp shade. He turns toward the burning barrel, aims the hose, and pulls the trigger. I'm doing the slow motion no thing, and when the water hit the barrel, a mushroom cloud of fire and smoke appears above my neighborhood. I'm freaking out, screaming about shooting a hose into burning liquid. I later asked his uncle what was in the barrel. He said, oh, a mix of kerosene and fuel oil. I said, that is two of the three ingredients in rudimentary liquid rocket fuel. The third ingredient makes it explode slower. Eventually, the ambulance came and immediately left with Gary. Turned out he had second and third degree burns on over half of his body. However, the biggest issue was the concussion of the explosion. He had a bajillion little internal bleeds all through his torso. He nearly died more than once. It took him a few months to get out of the hospital. He looked pretty horrible. He's fine now, though he is not pretty, but he had to stop doing my lawn because I guess sunlight hurts now. Poor sweet dude came to me. This was how I found out he was out of the hospital to apologize and to tell me his cousin will be doing my lawn. I was just glad he lived and here he was making sure I was taken care of. And that is the story of my exploding neighbor. Since people are asking, the reason the barrel exploded was because he decided to burn off the liquid in the barrel by lighting some newspaper. When he approached, the fire hit the fumes and kaboom. I hope you guys enjoyed the crazy stories in this video. And if you made it this far, I'm sure you're going to also enjoy what's the strangest rule at a friend's house. Story 2 will make you question everything you know about your friends. I'll see you in that video and thank you for watching this one.